Uh, I am Akshay Ram, and uh, the title of my talk today is Revisiting Non-Malleable Secret Sharing. And this is based on joint work with Sai Krishna Badri Narayanan from UCLA. So let me start this talk by giving you a brief overview of threshold secret sharing. As you might all be aware, threshold secret sharing was introduced in the seminal works of Shamir and Blackley in the late 70s, and it works as follows. So there is a dealer uh, who has a secret message M, and he splits this secret message into N shares, SH1 to SHN, with some threshold parameter T. He then sends the IH share SHI to party PI. We require two properties from the threshold secret sharing scheme. So the first is the correctness, which says that if uh, any group of T or more parties come together uh, and they can use their shares to reconstruct the message M. And the second is the secrecy property, which says that any group of T minus one parties learn no information about this message M. And uh, threshold secret sharing is a fundamental cryptographic primitive with numerous applications. Uh, some of these applications include constructing uh, secure multi-party computation protocols in the honest majority setting, uh, constructing threshold cryptographic primitives such as threshold encryption, threshold signatures, and so on. And the security of all these applications crucially rely on the secrecy property of the underlying threshold secret sharing scheme. But what if the adversary's goal is to not to learn the secret, but instead its goal is to tamper with the secret? So to motivate this further, let's take the example of uh, a threshold signature scheme. So in here there is a sharing algorithm which takes in a secret signing key SK, and it splits this secret signing key SK into N shares using any threshold secret sharing scheme, and let's fix the threshold parameter to be T. And uh, the sharing algorithm then sends the IH share SHI to party PI. And we require two properties from threshold signatures, namely, any group of T or more parties can come together and generate a signature on a message. And the security property is that uh, any group of T minus one parties cannot forge a signature. But now consider an adversary who corrupts the channel through which the parties receive their shares and induces a tampering attack on these shares. So we'll denote the tampered version by a tilde symbol on top. For example, the tampered share of party P1 is denoted by SH1 tilde. Now, uh, when a group of T or more parties come together and generate a signature with respect to these tampered shares, then they are implicitly generating the signature with respect to a tampered signing key. For example, this tampering attack could fix the last few bits of the signing key to be all zero string, in which case the signature is generated with respect to a signing key whose last few bits are all zeros. This means that the system now becomes vulnerable to related key attacks, and this is devastating. So you might be wondering that if the uh, adversary is able to tamper this with uh, signing key to some related signing key, isn't he breaking the secrecy property of the secret sharing scheme? So the answer is no. So it's possible to tamper with the secret even without learning the underlying secret. And in other words, secrecy alone is not sufficient to prevent these tampering attacks. So uh, let us first see why the existing cryptographic primitives do not provide a reasonable solution to this problem. Firstly, observe that most of the existing secret sharing schemes in the literature are linear. This means that if I multiply each share with some constant alpha, then the reconstructed secret will be alpha times m. And this property has been crucially used in many applications, including designing secure multi-party computation protocols and so on. However, this property trivially allows tampering attacks because each of these tampering functions can just multiply the shares with alpha and we can tamper with respect to a related secret. On the other hand, primitives such as verifiable secret sharing and robust secret sharing only provide guarantees when at most half the shares are tampered with. However, in the scenario that I explained before, it's possible for the adversary to corrupt all the channels and tamper all the shares, in which case these primitives do not provide any meaningful security guarantees. 
And a beautiful work of Kramer et al. introduced this notion called as algebraic manipulation detection codes, which can detect if a tampering has occurred. However, it restricts the class of tampering attacks to be just additive functions. So it's a very restrictive class. Another beautiful work uh, of Zimbowski, Peter II, and Wicks introduced this notion called as non-malleable codes, which can protect against these tampering attacks. Unfortunately, they do not provide any secrecy guarantees, which is crucial for applications such as constructing threshold signatures and so on. There is an exception to this. So for the special case of two split state non-malleable codes, it's known to imply a two out of two secret sharing scheme. However, this is not even true for higher states, including three. So even three split state non-malleable codes is not known to imply a three out of three secret sharing scheme. This to prevent these tampering attacks on existing secret sharing schemes, Goel and Kumar introduced a new notion called as non-malleable secret sharing. So what is this non-malleable secret sharing? So it's just like any other threshold secret sharing scheme. It satisfies the correctness and the secrecy property. And in addition to that, it also satisfies the non-malleability property, which roughly states that any tampering attack on these shares either preserves the original secret or completely destroys it. So more formally, um, let's uh, consider the shares SH1 to SHN of some secret message M. And let's consider an adversary uh, who defines these tampering functions f1 to fn. So we consider the function fi to take in the share shi and output the tampered share shi tilde. Now the non-malleability property requires that for any choice of these adversarial tampering functions, the reconstructed secret is either the original secret m, in which case there is no tampering, or the distribution is independent of M, where the randomness from this distribution is over the randomness of this sharing phase. Okay, so it says that either it's the same message or its distribution is completely independent of the starting message. So in this work, we only focus on the individual tampering setting where each FI just acts on an individual share SHI but it's possible to consider more expressive tampering functions which can uh, uh, take in two or more shares together. But here we'll just restrict ourselves to individual tampering. So coming back to the case of threshold signatures, let's see how uh, non-malleable secret sharing helps us in preventing these related key attacks. And this was proposed in a recent work of Agarwal et al. So the sharing phase now takes in the secret signing key, and instead of sharing it using any threshold secret sharing, it will now share it using a non-malleable secret sharing scheme. So now when an adversary tampers with these shares, the non-malleability property of the secret sharing scheme ensures that the reconstructed secret SK tilde is either the original secret SK or something which is completely independent of the secret key SK. So this means that the system is protected against related key attacks. So what is new in this work? We give rate efficient, and, uh, rate efficient as well as stronger constructions of non-malleable secret sharing. So let me start with the rate efficiency part. Recall that the rate of a secret sharing scheme is defined as the ratio between the size of the secret message to the size of a share, and it's a main parameter which determines the efficiency of a secret sharing scheme. So the prior work of Goel and Kumar, which introduced this primitive of non-malleable secret sharing, also gave a construction of non-malleable secret sharing with rate uh, which grows as 1 over n log m, where n is the number of parties and m is the size of the secret. Asymptotically, this rate tends to 0 as the size of the secret uh, goes to infinity. And the constants hidden inside the big theta notation are also large. So it's not concretely efficient. So in this work, we improve the state of the affairs by first giving a, a positive rate construction of t out of n non-malleable secret sharing for any threshold t greater than or equal to 4. So in particular, the, the rate is 1 over t log squared n, where t is the threshold and n is the number of parties. So this rate is independent of the size of the secret. And another advantage is that the constants hidden are very small, and it's, in fact, concretely efficient. 
Another advantage of our construction is that it easily extends to more general access structures. So we can also get non-malleable secret sharing for more monotone access structures beyond the threshold constructions. OK, so these are the results in the rate efficiency part. So let's move on to the stronger security model that we consider. So, as, uh, so the prior work of Goyal and Kumar considered a security definition where the adversary tampers with the share only once. But in practice, it's possible for the adversary to launch more than one tampering attack. For example, if the shares are stored on some smart cards, then the adversary could make multiple copies of these smart cards and launch different tampering attacks on these, uh, each copy. And to prevent these attacks, we propose a stronger attack model called as multiple tampering, which is somewhat related to this continuous non-malleable codes which you heard about uh, today. And roughly, it says that if I take in the shares SH1 to SHN of uh, some secret message M, and if I consider two different adversarial tampering attacks on these shares, we require that the joint distribution of the reconstructed secrets should to be independent of the original secret message M. So here we just consider two tampering attacks, but it's possible to extend it to multiple tampering attacks in a straightforward manner. OK, so this is the security model. So this is directly inspired by a similar notion for non-malleable codes, uh, studied by the work of Faust et al. And uh, concurrent and independent work of Agarwal et al. also consider a strengthening of this multiple tampering model, where the strengthening allows the reconstruction sets to be different across different tamperings. OK, so in the stronger security model, we first show a negative result, which shows that for if we allow a priori unbounded number of tamperings, then for any threshold t and for any number of parties, this notion is impossible to achieve. And we also show a positive result, which sh uh, states that if we a priori bound the number of tamperings, then it's possible to construct this notion. And additionally, the positive result is also rate efficient. So it has a positive rate. It's independent of the size of the message. So in the rest of the talk, we'll first go over the main ideas behind the rate efficient construction. And I'll then briefly describe how to extend it to the stronger security model of uh, multiple tampering. And I'll finally conclude with some recent progress in this area. So let's start with the rate efficiency part. So before going on, let's see what was the main bottleneck that was affecting the rate in the prior work of Goel and Kumar. So the prior work of Goel and Kumar used this two split state non-malleable code, and then it used it as an underlying building block to construct a non-malleable secret sharing. The rate of the code that was used in their paper was 1 over log m, and that's where the log m factor comes in the rate, and this is asymptotically tending to 0. And it, subsequent to our work, uh, constant rate two split state non-malleable codes was constructed very recently in the work of Agarwal and Obramsky, but the parameters there are still concretely inefficient of this code. So the main idea behind a rate efficient construction is to instead rely on a three split state non-malleable code, and there are constructions which have an explicit constant rate of one over three. Okay, so this actually uh, requires some new techniques, and let me uh, tell you the techniques that we uh, require. Okay, so before moving on, let's quickly recall what is a three split state non-malleable code. So there is a message M, and there is an encoding procedure that allows you to encode this message into three states, L, C, and R. And uh, there's also a corresponding decoding procedure, which, given these three states, reconstructs the message. So the non-malleability property requires that uh, if we uh, tamper with these three states independently, then the reconstructed tampered message is either the original message or something which is independent of it. So as I mentioned before, the difference between non-malleable codes and non-malleable secret sharing is that non-malleable codes need not preserve the secrecy property. For example, there could be one state which gives information about the message. And uh, independent works of Kanukurti et al. and Gupta et al. give 
uh, explicit three split state non malleable codes with rate which is one third. And we'll be using this as the building block in our non malleable secret sharing. So let's go on to the construction. So let's start with the sharing phase where we have a message M and we want to split it into N shares. So the first part is to first encode this message using a three split state non malleable code to get states L, C, and R. We'll then secret share L using any T out of N secret sharing scheme. It need not be non malleable or anything. So you can just think about Shamir secret sharing to get the shares L1, L2 up to Ln. We'll then share C using a three out of N. So here it's T, it's here it's three, uh, to get the shares C1 to Cn. And finally, we'll uh, secret share R using a two out of N secret sharing to get the shares R1 to Rn. And the share corresponding to part I will be Li, Ci, and Rn. So it will be evident in a few moments on why we are using different thresholds. So this is crucially used in the security argument. But let's first re uh, check if it's reconstructable. But yeah, so given any T shares, you can use the reconstruction procedure for the underlying secret sharing to get the states L, C, and R. And then finally, we can use the decoding procedure of the non-malleable code to get the secret message. In. OK, so the interesting part is that how do we prove non-malleability of this construction? So recall that to prove non-malleability, we need to show that for any choice of adversarial tampering functions, say f1 to fn, the reconstructed tampered secret is either the original secret or something which is independent of it. So to do this, we actually reduce any tampering attack against the secret sharing scheme to a corresponding tampering attack against the underlying non-malleable code. That is, given these functions f1, f2 to fn, we construct functions g1, g2, to, and g3, which tamper with the states l, c, and r. And it follows from the security of the non malleable code that the reconstructed tampered secret is either the original secret or something which is independent of it. But the main challenge in designing this g1, g2, and g3 is to ensure that they are independent. So, to use the security of the non-malleable code, we must ensure that the tampering function g1 is independent of both c and r. Similarly, the tampering function g2 has to be independent of l and r, and the tampering function g3 has to be independent of l and c. So ensuring this independent is the main challenge, and this is where we'll use the fact that we are secret sharing c and r using different thresholds. Okay, so let's see uh, how we can argue that g2 which is tampering C is independent of the first state L. Yeah, so if you assume that the threshold T is greater than or equal to four, uh, now assume, uh, con consider C and its secret shared using a three out of N secret sharing scheme. So it means that given any three states, let's say C1, C2, and C3, we can use it to reconstruct C. However, because L is secret shared using a T out of N secret sharing scheme, and T is greater than or equal to four. Given L1, L2, and L3, L is completely hidden. So this is how we use the, 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 the fact that these are different to ensure that G2 is independent of L. So given any three states, it's possible to construct C, but given any three states of uh, shares of L, it's information theoretically hides L. So we can use this to argue that G2 is independent of L. By a similar argument, we can show that uh, G3, which is tampering R, can be made independent of both L and C. How? Since R is secret shared using a two out of N secret sharing scheme, given any two states, let's say R1 and R2, it's possible to reconstruct R. But given any two states of C, let's say C1 and C2, and any two states of L, L1 and L2, it's impossible to uh, it, it information theoretically hides both L and C. Okay, so we have used this fact that these thresholds are different to prove that G2 is independent of L, and G3 is independent of both L and C. But still, we need to prove independence in the other direction. We, namely, we need to prove that G2 is still independent of R, and G1 is independent of both C and R. Okay, so to prove this, we actually use a tool called as leakage resilient secret sharing, which was introduced in this uh, independent works of Ben Namuda et al. and uh, Goel and Kumar. So 
So it's just like any other threshold secret sharing which satisfies this correctness property. And in addition, the secrecy property is now strengthened. So the secrecy property requires that any group of t minus one parties learn no information about the secret message m, even when they are given bounded leakage from the other shares. So the adversary is now provided t minus one shares in the clear, as well as bounded leakage from the other shares, and still he cannot tell what the secret is. Okay, so we'll use this primitive and we'll slightly modify the construction so that we'll secret share C using a three out of N leakage resilient secret sharing and secret share R using a two out of N leakage resilient secret sharing. Now, using the leakage from this uh, two out of N, we can in fact prove that both G2 and uh, G1 is independent of R. And similarly, using the leakage from this three out of N secret sharing scheme, we can prove that G1 is independent of C. So we have proved independence in all directions. So this is the high level idea behind the proof, but uh, there are lots of other uh, things that I uh, swept under the rug, but I'll encourage you to look into the paper for the details. Uh, and in this work, we also give efficient constructions of leaky resilient secret sharing for any constant threshold T. And this is used via connection to combinatorial objects called as perfect hash function families, and this might be of independent interest. Okay, so this is the main idea behind the rate efficient construction. And uh, let me quickly go over the uh, details behind the stronger uh, results, uh, that is non malleable secret sharing in the stronger multiple tampering model. So the construction is exactly the same as before, except that we use a three split state multi-tamperable non-malleable codes. And we reduce any multi-tampering attack against this underlying secret sharing scheme to a corresponding multi-tampering attack against the non-malleable code, and this is the high-level idea behind the security. And as an independent contribution, we also give rate-efficient constructions of multi-tamperable three split state non-malleable codes. Okay, so to conclude, we, uh, in this work, we uh, give rate efficient constructions of non malleable secret sharing in the stronger security model of multiple tampering. And there has been a lot of recent progress in this area. And uh, if you are in, uh, not working in this area, then you sh it's, it's probably the right time to jump in. Uh, so, in a su uh, subsequent work with uh, Vasudevan, we actually extend the techniques in this work to get a constant rate construction of non malleable secret sharing. So here we just had a positive rate construction, but here it's an explicit constant rate. The rate is close to one third, which is the rate of the underlying non malleable code. And uh, in another work, uh, interesting work of Kumar, Mekan, and Sahai gives constructions of leakage resilient secret sharing against a stronger model of adaptive leakage. So here the adversary is allowed to adaptively query uh, leakage functions from the shares and still the secrecy should hold. So this is a much stronger model than what we require for constructing non-malleable secret sharing. And uh, another interesting work, Fawn, and Venturi give a construction of continuous non-malleable secret sharing in the computational setting with optimal rate. And some of the interesting open problems are uh, can we get some lower bounds on the rate of non-malleable secret sharing? Another interesting problem is to improve the rate for more expressive tampering functions, and even positive results are very rare in this more expressive tampering functions. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? So I may be missing something, but, but uh, is it clear that um, if you have a privacy threshold of T, you yeah. cannot hope to get a normal ability threshold larger than T? Exactly. In the split so model? we it can still hope to get T minus one shares. We can tamper with T minus one shares together. And yeah, so those are, there are lots of interesting. Uh, so there are some positive results in this area, but there is there's a lot of open questions still. So, so in the split model, uh, you could hope to get a normal ability threshold larger than the privacy threshold? In the split state model? No. Like, when your functions are, are applied uh, separately on each share, uh, 
Like, no, I didn't get your... Uh, so I'm asking, that I should say that I have a privacy threshold of, of 10. Yeah. Uh, can I hope to get a normal ability threshold of 20? No, because you can just reconstruct the secret and then uh, you can just tamper uh, with it. Let's say add one to it and then you can... So even if you're tampering functions or they are separately temper each secret, you, you can apply this attack? I mean. Oh, so you're saying that... Uh, so if I'm tampering with eShare independently, then yes. my reconstruction set can be as high as possible. Yes. But so I'm considering... I'm asking, I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So in your construction, why do you need two out of N uh, secret sharing for R? Can't you just publicly send uh, the amount of R and follow the same uh, argument? Because it seems that secret sharing for R is not... Then we can't argue that uh, the tampering on C is independent of R. Because we actually crucially used the fact that R is secret shared using a two out of N leaky resilient secret sharing, which is something stronger than just threshold secret sharing, to get argue this independence of the other tampering functions of R. So, in order to reduce to the uh, security of non-malleable code, we need to have independence in all directions. Uh, but still, when uh, so like if it was one out of n, still uh, you could. Then say I, I I don't think this construction is secure. At least I don't have a proof that it is secure. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, so, uh, kind of uh, the same in the same topic. When you talk, uh, when you give that reduction to uh, tampering on L and on C and yeah. R, uh, what you basically show that the tampering on L is independent of C and R. What you show that R uh, tampering on R is independent of L and C, but you don't show the same on C. You show no. That we C also show it. So. Okay, so the, you gave some simplification of the argument, right? Because like, if you go this way and this way, you show that C is tampered no, independently of L. We need to prove L. that G2 is independent of both L and R. Yeah, G2 you need bo bo both of them, but you showed only from L and from R. Oh, and R is actually done via this uh, leaky resilient secret sharing. So since R is secret shared using leaky resilient secret sharing, we can sh use the leakage from this uh, secret sharing scheme to prove that G2 is independent of R. So we okay. just use well, the well, thresholds well, to be different it's, to... It's, it's independent of L and then you, uh, you add some leakage from R, right? So this, you can think about this leakage from this as the tampered state of C. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I get it. Thank you. Uh, okay. So if you replace this three split by a two split code, do you get the threshold T greater than or equal to three? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, that's surprising. More questions? No? Okay. So when you say you, you want to prove better lower, like proof lower bounds, what do you mean? You already get a constant the, rate. You want to prove a constant lower so bound? So the constant is one third what we achieve. So is, is it necessary to have this oh, okay. one third or is it possible to get just like Shamir rate? Uh, I see. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thanks to the speaker again. <laughs>